Hallelujah. God is worthy to be praised. Listen, let's go to him and let's open this time of worship in a word of prayer. God, we bless you. We magnify your great name. There's nobody like you in all of the earth. How excellent is your name. How amazing you have been to us. And now, God, we invite your presence into our homes and into our lives and into these spaces at that we might worship you in spirit and in truth. Have your way, move by your spirit, and do what only you can do to give us direction, give us insight, and to teach us from your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. Somebody ought to give God praise right off down through there. Listen, it's time for our declarations. We've been making a faith declaration all of 2021, and it's already right there on your screen. I want you to repeat it after me. Are you ready? Here we go. For all that I've been through, and with all my Savior has done, I declare he's bringing it all together for me in 2021. Somebody, if you believe that, somebody just give him praise right off down through there. Hallelujah. Good morning, Refuge Church. This is the time in our service where we pass the peace. This is where we show the love of Christ to everyone within our circle. So all I need you to do, if you don't mind, grab your phone, call somebody, text them, let them know that you love them, that you've been thinking about them, that they have been on your mind. Also, if you don't mind, subscribe to our YouTube channel, check us out on Facebook. So you know what to do, everybody. Let's pass the peace.
lifts up my heart and you love me the same. Yeah. You see the depths of my heart and you love me the same. You love me the same, same. You see the depths of my heart and you love me the same. There's nobody like you, God. You see the depths of my heart and you love me the same. Church. I'm so glad to be invited back with you again. Today I want to talk about putting respect on your name. I am recording from my back porch, so you might hear cars, you might hear a dog, or you might hear the chirping of the crickets, but we just keeping it real out here, right? Put some respect on your name is the subject. Let's get started. Girl Trek, a Black woman-led organization that aims to get Black women walking regularly, has a way of introducing themselves and others that I find quite unique. They recall who they are as a daughter, as a granddaughter, and as a great-granddaughter. So for me, it would go like this. My name is Sharifa daughter of Veronica, granddaughter of Vanola, great-granddaughter of Altema. I love this kind of introduction because it immediately grounds me to a place and a time and a people. I'm not alone. I'm one of many generations and I'm still here. Sometimes the society around us can deceive us into believing that we didn't come from anywhere, that we're untethered nobodies, expendable, that we're worth only as much as we can entertain or produce, only as valuable as our beauty or strength, 
our humor or our good nature. The world, and to be honest, the Christian community too, can tie our worth so intimately to a bank account or marital status or education or our possessions that we forget ourselves. We forget ourselves. Today I'm calling us to remember by rehearsing who we are, beloved, cared for, significant to your very core and very much a beloved child of God. I only have one point for you today. You're a gift, uniquely fashioned by both heaven and earth. You are a life forged by God's stubborn will and the survival of your ancestors. So put some respect on your name. Let me say that again. You are a gift, uniquely fashioned through both heaven and earth. You are a life forged by God's stubborn will and the survival of your ancestors. So put some respect on your name. Let me make my case. Lineage and genealogy matter in the Bible. The Bible is full of genealogies to show the human path through the world, to remember our origins, like in the book of Genesis, to show how far the Israelites had come, like in the time of the exiles, that you can see in the books of Ezra or Nehemiah. To honor people who had been abused or slighted in their own time, like Bathsheba, Tamar, and Rahab, those women who are in the genealogy of Christ. During the time of the Exodus specifically, Yahweh wants the people to remember him as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Why would the true and living God want to align himself with imperfect dead men? Perhaps to remind the Israelites that they come from somewhere. Maybe hundreds of years of dehumanization, enslavement, and the legal slaughter of baby boys had robbed them of a sense of worth and significance. Had to say that. They were dominated by powers that did not want them to remember their own dignity. Yahweh wanted them to remember, even in their times of worship, that they came from somewhere and that they were somebody. Perhaps Yahweh aligned himself with imperfect and dead men to remind his people that he can do the impossible with improbable people. Because we know, we know the patriarchs, they were tricksters. They were questionable fathers. They were problematic husbands. I still think about Abraham putting Sarah out there as his sister instead of his wife. It was bad business. If, if God could liberate and protect his people in spite of that, in spite of their origin story, to bring the Israelites through, that meant God could do anything. I know that some of us have a story that includes caregivers who did anything but they withheld care. They were reckless or violent instead of loving. There may be parts of your lineage that you would rather forget. I want to say I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You weren't treated with all the love and care each one of us deserves. You should have been loved. I pray for your healing. 
And I'm celebrating you because you know what? You are still here. Your survival is a gift and your thriving miracle. Heaven has intervened and the stubborn will of God has kept you despite the worst this world has had to offer you. I also want to acknowledge that so many of us have had our lineage systematically and violently stolen. Some of us simply cannot trace our lineage back. I'm more in the fact that I can't go further than my great grandparents as far as our history because, well, because of the history of violent enslavement. My indigenous siblings are scarred by forcible removal from their land and from systemic genocide. There's so many immigrant stories that are filled with the sacrifices of loved ones or groups of people who fled famine, persecution, and death. So many of our American origin stories are filled with painful gaps. They're like broken branches in our family tree. But the greatest inheritance we have from those ancestors whose names we don't yet know is our own breath. They survived so that we can live. Even though we may have been robbed through systems of evil or through family that didn't act like family, hear me. You're still here by God's grace. You're still here and your significance echoes through eternity, my dear beloved one. And you're not alone. You still got family. So I was reading through Ephesians the other day and <laughs> I love that book because Paul gets so excited in it that he winds down and then praises God and then he gets hype and he winds back up again. He just has to keep going. What got him so fired up in this letter is love. A love for Gentiles that, I mean, it must come straight from God because, you know, when Paul was Saul, he hated anyone who would dare to talk about Jesus as the son of God. He would imprison or stone to death his Jewish siblings. Can you imagine the hate that he held for non-Jewish people? His experience of Jesus changed his categories. It inverted his hierarchies. It redefined how he valued people. Being in Christ was radically transformative for Paul's sense of family. He wrote this love letter of Ephesians primarily to the people that he formerly despised. And man, it gets through here, <laughs> but he over and over again reassured them that in Christ, they who were once far off, dead, without hope in the world, were now blessed, adopted, and heirs of an internal inheritance. The love of Christ was so strong that it compelled Saul to rename himself Paul and live differently. We who are in Christ are just as radically transformed 
into the beloved. We have a new name in Christ. So <laughs> I'm Sharifa in Christ. Your Trey in Christ or Brianna in Christ or Keisha in Christ. Insert your name. Your last name is in Christ. We share this last name. We need to put some respect on that name. It's ancient. It's holy. We have a common heritage that spans thousands of years. Every believer is a sibling. We have a cloud of witnesses <laughs> cheering us on as we walk the walk of faith. We're not alone. We got family. We are in the family in all the best, most flourishing ways. This gives me hope because God doesn't see us like society may see us. God doesn't see us like that abuser and neglector may have seen us. God doesn't even see us as we might see ourselves. He sees us in Christ. And I don't mean like just Jesus out front and we're somewhere hiding. <laughs> it's us beautifully, uniquely together. And God loves who he sees. Paul is so amped and so giddy about this message that he can't wait to share it with his Gentile siblings. He's lifting their chins and straightening their backs before God. And the good news is that this message for the Gentiles is our message too. We are heirs. We are adopted. We are significant. Let me read Paul's enthusiastic words over us now. I'm reading from Ephesians 3, 15 to 21. It says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious, unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Oh, I love that he says that. We'll never grasp it for we, not on this side. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. <laughs> now all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus, through all generations, forever and ever. Amen. That's our prayer, beloved. Love is our family tree. God's love roots us, and there is no axe that can threaten it. Strengthen yourself in this truth.
Remember, you are a gift uniquely fashioned through both heaven and earth. You are life forged by God's stubborn will and the survival of your ancestors. Put some respect on your name. So this week, starting now, how do we put respect on our name? Well, first, watch how you talk about yourself, image bearer. I'm talking to myself too. God says of us that we are made in his image. We are the likeness of the Most High, every one of us. We are so precious that Jesus said, let me become human and walk with them, teach them, heal them, lay down my life for them, live again in this body. He honors our humanity that much. We ought to put some respect on it. Second, the way we respect our name, we remember where we came from, both spiritually and figuratively. We have reminders from the stories of faith in the Bible to the weathered poems of our grandmother's hands that we come from somewhere. Remember everyone and everything that got you here. I promise that the more you contemplate your origin story, the more you will recognize that you are a miracle. Lastly, encourage one another with the truth. If you like me, you won't always be enthusiastic about yourself 100% of the time. And that's just the truth. Self-loathing can creep in. Insecurity will creep in. So we need to depend on one another to get as hyped as Paul and remind one another of our eternal worth in Christ. So, Allow me to enthusiastically remind you now. You are a gift uniquely fashioned through both heaven and earth. You are a life forged by God's stubborn will and the survival of your ancestors. So put some respect on your name. We're up to that part of our worship experience where we worship God in giving. You see, there's four different ways that you can give, but even in those four different ways that you can give, there's three different methods and means by which you can give. One is the tithe. For all of us who are submitted, committed followers of Jesus Christ, we recognize and we know and understand that the, 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 the floor for our giving to God is our tithe. And so we give a portion of our income that comes in. We give a percentage of that to him right off the top because we recognize the covenant connection. But then there are others who can give offering. It's every time God shows up in grace in your life that you and I give to say thank you. We recognize your grace in our lives. Grace is reciprocal. Based upon what grace I've given, I give an offering based upon the level that I appreciate the grace that he's shown in my life. Then there's the love offering. That's where I take a portion and I give a certain percentage as a seed and I sow it into the life of the prophet because I heard the voice of God through what the man or the woman of God has said. And whatever the means and whatever the method, we all recognize that we worship God in giving. You don't give it to a person. You don't even give it to a church. You give as unto the Lord. So let's ask his blessings upon what we are offering and sacrificing to him. Let's pray. God, we thank you. We bless you. We magnify you. You have been good. Your grace has been poured out into our lives. We have seen it and we have experienced it all week long. And we pause just for a moment to worship you for who you are by taking a portion of that which you've blessed us with and giving it back to you. And God, we pray that you would bless these gifts. We pray that you would bless each giver, that you would allow these gifts to be used to advance your kingdom here and around the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's give as unto the Lord.
Listen, I want to say thank you so much for spending this portion of your day with us and with the Lord. I pray that you heard the Lord's voice. I heard that you felt the warmth of his presence in your life as you prepare to walk in everything that God has already preordained for you and I to deal with on this week. Can I pray for us? Father, we bless you. We magnify your great name. You have been great and you are greatly to be praised. And now, God, we pray that as we end this worship experience, thank you that we don't end where your presence is with us and walks with us and goes with us and leads us in a plain path throughout all that we will see this week. Thank you for your hand of grace, your hand of peace on our lives. And we pray that the promises and the provisions that come from the principles of your word would be released in the lives of your people this week in every way possible. And now I pray that the grace and the power and the love of Jesus would rest, rule, and abide on each of us both now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Somebody ought to give God praise right off down through there. Have a great week in the Lord. I love you. There's nothing that you can do about it.